For the next 8 to 10 minutes, we will be discussing ankylosing spondylitis with Kyle Martin, myself, Haley Metzner, and Stacy Potter. After this video, the viewer will be able to educate health professionals who may be involved in the initial assessment and management of ankylosing spondylitis patients with possible spinal injuries, provide options and examine benefits of different interventions, address direct implications for physical therapy of ankylosing spondylitis. AS is a chronic inflammatory disease of unknown etiology characterized by inflammation of spinal joints and adjacent structures that may lead to progressive and ascending bony fusion of the spine. Patients develop ossification of spinal ligaments and intervertebral discs resulting in bony ankylosis of the spine. It is important to note that AS generally starts in the SI region and moves uh, proximally and su uh, superiorly up the spine. According to Felix et al., prevalence of AS ranges from 0.15% to 1.8% in the Caucasian population. The incidence of AS is between 0.5 and 14 per 100,000 people per year in studies from different countries. Neurological abnormalities are reported in 67.3% of patients with AS. AS patients are at an increased risk for vertebral fractures. Fractures can lead to primary and secondary neurological impairments, often resulting in high levels of morbidity and mortality. Fractures can occur after minor trauma and are easily overlooked with potentially devastating consequences. Vertebral fracture is much more common in AS patients than in the general population secondary to the vertebral osteoporosis and altered mechanical properties of the spine. Low back pain and SI pain are the cardinal symptoms of AS. The cardinal complaints of patients with AS are pain, stiffness, and fatigue, resulting in various degrees of functional limitation. Presence of uveitis, inflammatory bowel disease, and psoriasis may be indicative of AS. AS commonly affects young Caucasian males, and sometimes it can result in limited chest expansion when fusion has progressed to the thoracic spine. Diagnosis can be completed by blood work and the identification of the HLA B27 genetic marker. These patients are often plagued by chronic fatigue, pain with periods of flare up and remission. Symptoms are not relieved by mechanical low back pain methods and pain begins in the SI joint and moves up the spine towards the head like Robbie stated previously. SI provocation tests used for mechanical low back pain will be positive in this patient population. It is important to differentiate between inflammatory low back pain, which is associated with AS, and mechanical low back pain. An accurate diagnosis of AS from the onset of symptoms can take many years. Factors that contribute to this delay include patients don't seek health care, existing criteria requires advanced radiographic changes in the SI joint for a diagnosis to be made, and, only, and this is only found in advanced stages of AS. AS is commonly mistaken for diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, also known as DISH, and DISH, unlike AS, lacks SI problems and has more flowing and bulky ossification. In this slide, you can see a progression from a normal spine to bony fusion that occurs in AS patients. There is no known cure for AS. Biological therapies which target the inflammatory process underlying AS may interrupt progression of the disease and provide relief of symptoms. However, these biological therapies will be taken by the patient for the rest of their life. These two indexes are used as disease-specific instruments to evaluate the effectiveness of treatment and focus on how ADLs are affected by AS. These two have high reliability and are also very sensitive to change. PT implications include uh, postural weakness and poor trunk control with these patients and these problems can lead to balance and proprioceptive issues. Differences in postural control may be due to an adapted neuromuscular control strategy caused by the biomechanical constraints that come with having this diagnosis. As for the role of the physical therapist in AS patients, we can do maintenance and possible improvements in mobility, strength, fitness, functional ability, and the overall health of the patient. PT also can help with prevention and management of related musculoskeletal problems associated with AS. It's important to note in this chart that there are many proposed treatments that we can apply to our AS patients. As you can see, the goals that follow, for example, you can maintain range of motion by stretching the shortened muscles often accompanied by the spine. Uh, you can reduce pain levels and fatigue by assessing their posture and giving them strengthening exercises.
It's also important for the physical therapist to learn what imaging is like for these patients. You can see the progression of their disease in here, or as you can see on this slide, and then you can know how to adjust your treatment to whatever progression they are at. As for treatment, AS patients have two main tasks. Medical management includes medication, an exercise routine, and diet for these patients. There's also psychosocial adaptations, including coping with anxiety, depression, anger, fear, and frustration that often may accompany these patients. They need to learn to accommodate their new life roles into their jobs, family, and friends with this diagnosis. Uh, as for the strategies for physical therapy treatment, you can do posture training, you can increase and or maintain spinal mobility, low impact exercise is important, aerobic exercises too, strength training, um, essentially core musculature strengthening is very important to this patient, and most of this can help reduce pain and stiffness in the spine, improve quality of life. And if your patient is obese, you may want to look at weight loss as an option as well, and then decrease the progression of disease activity. When working with AS patients, it is important to take an impairment-based approach. Uh, this patient, patient population is not category-based. Um, SINs can be pertinent for guiding treatment. Uh, just a reminder, SIN stands for severity or the intensity of the signs and symptoms, irritability or the time it takes for signs and symptoms to subside, nature, which, is the com which are the components and perception of illness, and s stage refers to progression and then stability of disease. Current medical treatment for AS includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, which are the traditional uh, medical treatment for AS, also anti-rheumatic disease-modifying drugs, and biological agents targeting tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF-alpha. These biological agents are the newest and most effective treatment for uh, slowing the progression of AS. Although fatigue is one of the most important symptoms associated with AS, it has not been a focus of treatment. Uh, part of your treatment should focus on decreasing fatigue and or pain to improve health-related quality of life. Again, anti-tumor necrosing factor, or TNF, has been found to decrease both fatigue and pain, which are highly correlating. Um, your exercise program should su include supervised group exercises to improve movement in the spine and overall well-being more than individual exercises. Uh, the psychosocial factors associated with AS are a contributing factor to the benefits of group exercise. Aquatic therapy followed by group exercises is better than group exercises alone. Uh, aquatic therapy can be very, be very beneficial for AS patients due to its low impact nature. Your home exercise program uh, can be very effective and affordable for AS patients. Um, it's necessary for long-term improvement, maintenance, and alleviation of AS symptoms. And uh, you should include range of motion, strengthening, uh, stretching, and improving posture in your home exercise program. Here are our references. Thank you for your time and have a good day.